period, or A-M-E, or U-M-A-E. You tell me where you see that in the scriptures, uh, where you just see apostolic versus Pentecostal. Tell me where you see that that is a set up as a denomination in, in the body of Christ. It don't exist. There's only one body. There's one Lord, one God, one faith, one baptism, one Lord of all. Amen. And until we understand what it means to operate in accordance with what he showed us in the past, in Acts, the second chapter, where we were in one place on one accord. Now, understand this, that one place in one accord, that don't mean that you were all of the same mindset. Uh, when I say the same mindset, you were not all of the same opinions. That's quite all right. But when it comes down to the Lord Jesus Christ, we should all be on one place in one accord. Amen. Plain and simple. And when you do that, then that's when the presence, the Shekinah presence, the glory of God will shine down upon you. Too many of us are chasing after the anointing, and anointing is good. But when the Shekinah glory of God is operating in your life, then you have power, as they did on the day of Pentecost. And then in the great works that went forth from there. Amen. On the day of Pentecost. So we pray that everybody that understands the word of God will understand that. And let's get out of this debating stuff. That's another trick of the enemy to get us running around here uh, 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 debating this, that, and the other. And who's doing the work of the Lord if you're spending too much time on debating? He ain't called me to debate. Now, in my secular, in my secular uh, 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 life... Oh, absolutely, I could do that. That's a part of the intellect that he gave me. That's part of the ability that he has given me. But that ain't what he called me to do. He ain't called me to do that in this new life. And I refuse to do it. Amen. I am a messenger. I am a bond servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I endeavor to do his will and his will alone. Sound the alarm ministries, Joel 2.1. Uh, uh, let me read that into your hearing. Amen. For those that don't know. Why we have that ministry that we have at Sound the Alarm Ministries. Amen. It ain't because of what's going on in the world, y'all. It's because of what's going on in the church. Let us go to Joel, the second chapter. And it's going to be that first verse. Amen. Right after Hosea. Joel 2.1 says this. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Understand this Zion is the church of today. Uh, uh, sound an alarm on my holy Mount Zion. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the judgment of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand. We are in the last of evil days. Isaiah 55. I Isaiah 58. I'm sorry. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58 and 1. Amen. Isaiah 58 1 says this. Cry loud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgressions and to the house of Jacob their sins. He ain't talking about going out there trying to proclaim to the sinner man to turn from the evils and wicked ways. He's talking about the church, y'all. The church. As found in 2 Chronicles, Lord have mercy, Jesus. It's the church. The Bible. The Bible, y'all. It's not a book that's designed to give to somebody that don't know God. The Bible speaks to the church. Amen. Second, Second Chronicles, Lord have mercy. The seventh chapter and the 14th verse. You're going to find these words. Lord have mercy, Jesus. If my people, I'm going to make it plain, who are called by my name shall humble themselves. Uh-huh. Pray, seek, crave, and require of necessity my face. And turn from their wicked ways. Why did he have to say that? He got to make it plain and, and, and make it make it direct. My people. My people who are called by my name. That's Christians. Believers in Christ. Saints. Us. Humble themselves. That's right. We need to humble ourselves. We done got well beyond the state of being where we should be. Too many of us in the church are running around here pumping and thumping our own chest up because we're thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to. We got things that we've done. We, we proclaimed ourselves to be this. We proclaimed ourselves to be that. But we, we're not doing the thing that God has called us to do in that proclamation. And he says, in require of necessity, my face. We are seeking everything else but God. We are seeking uh, after our own selves. Matter of fact, many of us are leaning to our own intellect and trying to intellectualize the things of God. You can't do that. Neither can I. We have finite minds. 
and turn from their wicked ways. Anything that is contrary to the will of God is wicked. Then will I hear from heaven uh huh, and forgive them their sin and heal their lands. That's right. Only then will God hear from hear from heaven and he will hear and he will forgive their sin because we have to first acknowledge that we have sin. If you say that you have if you have no sin, you are a liar and the truth ain't in you. Amen. Be responsible. Be accountable. Don't point the finger at this one or that one. It's me. Turn, turn, turn to yourself. Turn the finger to yourself and say, like the apostle, oh my God, not the apostle, uh, the prophet Isaiah, in the year that King Uzziah died. What happened to him? In the year that King Uzziah died, he also saw the Lord. Why couldn't he see the, the Lord prior to King Uzziah died? Because he was too fixated on Uzziah. Amen. And some of us, some of us today are too fixed on Uzziah. And, and who is Uzziah? Well, Uzziah don't have to be a king. Amen. Uh, Uzziah is a people, place, or a thing. Know this. You and I can be Uzziahs to ourselves. Some of us are too fixated on our own self. We're too caught up on what we're supposed to be. Some of us, Lord have mercy. We're too caught up on pomp and circumstance. We got titles. We got positions. And we walk around here flowing and operating in those positions and titles. Lord have mercy. Is the position and title greater than the one who gave it to you? Get that Uzziah out of your eye. And then he says, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up the skirts of his train, filled the most holy part of the temple. And he couldn't, he couldn't even see that prior to the year the king Uzziah died. And above him stood the seraphims, each had six wings, with two each covered his own face, and with two each covered his feet, and with two each flew. He saw the angels of God. Amen. The seraphims. Now the seraphims, there are two types of angels that, that, that the Bible uh, denotes. There's seraphims and cherubims. Those seraphims, those are the ones, those are the ministering angels. Uh, amen. Those are the ones that go out. Amen. That that do things on, on God's behest. The cherubims, those are those, oh, those are minister, those are ministering angels as well. Those are the singing. Uh, Lucifer was a cherubim, y'all. And one cried to another, said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Of hosts, the whole earth is full of His glory. That's what we should all be doing. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the shook at the voice of Him who cried, and the house was filled with smoke. There goes the glory of God, y'all, up operating. That's what happens when you come into the relationship with the Lord God and your focus is clearly on Him. When your focus is clearly on Him, the Shekinah glory of the God will make His presence known. Amen unto you. And then what happened? Isaiah looked at himself and this. He didn't. This is what. Oh, my God. This is what I like about the prophet Isaiah. He said, then said I. Woe is me for I am undone and ruined. Now, now, now note this. Now, he could have done what Adam did in, in, the, in the Garden of Eden and pointed the finger at the woman and God. He could have done what the woman did and pointed the finger at the serpent. But that ain't what Isaiah did, y'all. He said, woe is me, for I am undone and ruined because I am a man of unclean lips. He realized that he was a mess. But also this. Now, now watch what he did as well. Uh, uh, he said this. Uh-huh. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Now, I like to say something here parenthetically as I pause, that what he could have done, he could have flipped that. But if he had operated in his flesh, he could have flipped that and he would have flipped that. He would have first started off by saying, I dwell in the midst of people and they're unclean and they have affected me. <laughs> yeah, God is looking for uh, the truth and he looked for truth in the inward part. If you are unable to say that uh, uh, that what is wrong with you is, 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 is you and admit that it's you that is at, at fault then you know what? You ain't giving God the truth in the inward part. What you're doing is making excuses and you're not being accountable. You're not being responsible for your own actions. And then watch on as we go on. Uh, 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 I am a man of unclean for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. When you come into relation with the Lord Jesus Christ, your eyes should absolutely be open and you should be able to see. Not, not see yourself, not as you would like to see yourself and as we tend to look see ourselves with what I call a, a rose-colored glasses. We don't see no fault in us. It's always somebody else. Somebody else did this. The women, they caused me to backslide. They caused me to leave church. Are you kidding me? Then flew one of the seraphim, heavenly beings. Okay, here come one of God's uh, action angels to me. 
having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from off the altar. Now, this is an awesome thing to understand that God did right there. He sent one of his seraphim angels, heavenly beings, to me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off of the altar. And with it, he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity and guilt have, are taken away. Why? That's symbolic of, of sin, y'all, being washed away by the blood. What can wash away your sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. And then watch what happened. And your sin is completely atoned for and forgiven. Now that all that right there showed something that was completely different. Isaiah was a prophet, y'all. Now he was a prophet to the to the tribe of uh, yeah yeah he was a prophet living in the time. Amen. Let me see. Uh, let me go back to the uh, beginning of my uh, that book and see what time he was living in. Amen. When he was doing his prophecy. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the word. That's why the word of God is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. And I thank God for what he's showing us in his word. Amen. Isaiah began his ministry in the year of King Uzziah's death. That's when his ministry began. He continued as a prophet in Jerusalem. During the reigns of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. He was a contemporary of Amos, Hosea, and Micah. According to tradition, Isaiah was martyred by being saved and sawed in half under Manasseh, the wicked son of Hezekiah, who reigned from 696 to 642 B.C. So we got the timeline for when Isaiah was, was, was reigning as a prophet and when he began his prophecy. Now understand this, he couldn't even go into ministry. He might have been called to be a prophet, but he absolutely could not move into the, the operation of that until something had to happen for him. He had, to re he had to remove that impediment. The Bible says, let us set aside every sin and weight that so easily beset us, that hold us back. And it was not until the year the king Uzziah died that that happened for Isaiah. And then watch what happened, y'all. After he got cleaned up, got cleansed, and oh yeah, and his sin is completely atoned for and forgiven. Note, he said that he was a prophet for Jerusalem. Back then and, and there, and, and even what they do now, when they do an atonement for sins, they do an atonement for sins. That's done yearly. That's done yearly, y'all. When the when the prophet goes, or the prophet when the uh, the priest goes in the holy of holies and anoints himself first, uh, to cleanse himself first of his sins, so he can go before God for the, the sins of the people. And they do a day of atonement every single year. But the word of God said in Isaiah the sixth chapter, the seventh verse. And with it, he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity and guilt are taken away, and your sin is completely atoned for and forgiven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That prophesied right there, y'all. That was Jesus Christ. He was the, the, the propitiation, the payment for our sins. Once he did that, he has to do it no more. And now watch verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. That's what happened when God cleaned up Isaiah, y'all. He couldn't operate in the office that God had already predestined for him to off, off, uh, uh, operate in until they got that Uzziah out of his eyes and got all them impediments out the way until he finally realized that he himself said, I'm messed up. But I'm, I know I'm living, I'm living around people that are messed up, but first, I am messed up. I am messed up. Not nobody else. Stop blaming other people for what you're not doing or what you have done. It does not, it does not, uh, it does not satisfy God whatsoever. Whatsoever. Many of us in the body, and we like to use this here phrase too, and I'm going to jump on that since I'm jumping on things. Amen. Oh my God. Uh, 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 here we go, y'all. God knows my heart. You usually say that. We, that's usually said after somebody's done something and they know it was the wrong thing to do. I done already told you what James 4.17 said about that. Now I'm going to tell you what God says about that heart of yours that you declare he knows. And oh yeah, uh, know this. Oh yes, he knows it. He knows it. You might not want him to know it the way he know it, but he absolutely knows it. And I'm going to help some understanding here because too many of what, what we really want to say, God knows the heart that I want him to know. Oh, no, he ain't going to do that, y'all. <laughs> he ain't going to go by that. This is what God knows about the heart of man. The heart is deceitful above all things, and it is exceedingly perverse and corrupt and severely mortally sick. 
who can know it, perceive it.